Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you with an update on the world's largest prison in El Salvador. When Nayib Bukele became the president of El Salvador in June 2019, he was on a one-man mission to break the gang culture in El Salvador. And in order to do this, he built a state-of-the-art prison and suspended the constitutional rights of all suspected gang members. And as a direct result, more than 70,000 suspected gang members have been arrested over the last two years, and this state-of-the-art prison houses 40,000 of them. And new footage has now been released, showing an additional 2,000 prisoners being transferred to this facility. And in today's video, we will have a look at this prison, which is absolutely brutal from a prisoner's perspective. It's a state-of-the-art facility from a security point of view, but in terms of home comforts, there are absolutely zero for the people who are imprisoned here. And in fact, human rights campaigners have called it a black hole of human rights. And a United Nations official described it as a concrete pit built to dispatch prisoners without applying the death penalty. However, in response to this, the President Nayib Bukele has said that if human rights campaigners want to take the prisoners, then he will quite happily hand them over to any country that wants to take them in. So in today's video, we'll have a look at the latest footage that's been released by El Salvador showing the transfer of these new prisoners. We'll also take a look at the cells themselves. We'll talk about how many prisoners are being housed per cell, how often they're allowed out, how much exercise they're getting, and what food they're getting. And I can tell you that none of these items are going to score highly on TripAdvisor if inmates are doing a review of this prison. We'll also take a look at the solitary confinement conditions, which are even worse than the standard cells. We'll talk about the work that's being offered to these prisoners. That's the only form of recreation that they're going to get, is doing some compulsory work. We'll have a look at the conditions that the guards are living under. And then finally, we'll take a look at the external security, because even if you manage to escape all of the perimeter fences and the high levels of security internally, you then have to face all of the external security. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's supporting the channel. If you're a long-term supporter, either through Patreon, where you can get early access to my videos, as well as watching them advert-free, or YouTube membership, or buy me a coffee membership, thank you so much. I really appreciate that long-term support. Helps really to keep me going. And if you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks recently, Thank you for the time and effort you've taken to do that. I really appreciate it. I see every single one of those messages. I do read them. I don't get a chance, unfortunately, to respond to all of them. But thank you. It really helps to keep me going. The latest footage that's been released by El Salvador shows an additional 2,000 prisoners being transferred to the Center for the Confinement of Terrorism, also known as CECOT, and as you can see from this footage, the only item of clothing that the prisoners are allowed are long white boxer shorts. They don't have any shoes or anything else. All of their heads have been shaved. The majority of these prisoners are bound by handcuffs, which have been set behind them. So they have their hands behind their back. They're told to bend down and keep their heads down as they're moving forward. And there is a heavy presence of guards in all situations. The prisoners have been transferred by buses and on these buses, they're told to also keep their heads down. There is no talking allowed. Everybody has to sit in complete silence. And the prisoner transfers have taken place at night to minimise the chances of any gang interference, any gangs trying to break them out. The guards themselves are heavily armed, and there is a helicopter which is patrolling the area, making sure that nothing untoward is happening. There are no ambushes that have been planned. When the prisoners arrive at the facility itself, they continue to remain in handcuffs and they have to keep bent over and they are told to move at pace. And you can see that some of the prisoners also have foot manacles on, so they've got handcuffs on their feet and these are actually joined to the ones on their hands. So this is a real high security operation. These prisoners are not being given any chance to do anything at all. There is no chance of escape. Once they're inside the facility, they are lined up. They are told to sit down on the floor 
and put their head against the person in front of them. So this is a really humiliating situation for a lot of these prisoners. They're obviously told that they've got no rights whatsoever and they have to obey whatever these guards are telling them to do. They are then processed. They're given a prisoner number, which will be retained throughout their stay at the prison. And once processed, they will then be allocated to their cells. And these cells contain up to 156 prisoners in each cell. And we'll have a look at the details of those cells just in a moment. But they are absolutely brutal. I don't think there's many prisons in the world where the conditions are quite like this. I think the issue of the treatment of these gang member prisoners is really quite an interesting topic. And some commentators have actually compared what's going on in this prison to the concentration camps in World War II in terms of shaving people's heads, not giving them any rights, ordering them around, locking them up in inhumane conditions. But I think in terms of taking that concept into account, one of the big issues here was that historically, El Salvador was one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Its homicide rate was off the scale. The chances of being killed in El Salvador were very high. It was actually the highest homicide rate in the world, and we'll talk about that later in the video. And when Nayib Bukele took over as president, the gangs were running the country, not just on the streets, but also from the prisons. So people who'd been arrested, who were in those gangs and then sent to prison, were still able to control the gangs using mobile phones and computers and communication and all of the other things that were possible in the old style prisons. However, this new prison prevents that from happening. What Nayib Bukele wants to do is firstly, take these gang members off the street and then secondly, cut any access that they have to their gangs that are still operating. He wants to break this gang culture and he's using extreme methods to do that. But as you'll see later in the video, his methods are proving to be very popular in El Salvador amongst the population. This prison complex has been built in the middle of nowhere, deliberately to make sure that it's very difficult for the gangs in El Salvador to break in and try to take some of their prisoners out. So this is a high security facility that's difficult firstly to get to in terms of its location. And also technically it would be very difficult for the gangs to be able to break in and release any of the prisoners. The prison complex itself is spread over 57 acres or 23 hectares. And there are eight prison blocks, four at either end of the facility with 32 cells within them. Now that might not sound like a lot of cells, 32, but when you consider that these cells are holding up to 156 prisoners each, that means that each of the blocks can hold 5,000 prisoners and the prison has a total capacity of 40,000. And as I mentioned right at the start of today's video, all of these places have been allocated for suspected gang members. Normal criminals will not be sent to this prison. This is to control the gangs. This is sending a message to all of those gang members still out there that you don't want to be continuing in that gang because when we catch you, we will put you in this prison for the rest of your life. Now we'll talk about the cells in a moment, but in terms of the perimeter fences, there are two sets of mesh fences which are fully electrified. And these set of electrified fences are also surrounded by two reinforced concrete walls and the total perimeter of the outer wall is 1.3 miles long. And there are 19 watchtowers positioned all around this facility to make sure that all of the guards have good visibility and can see if anything is coming to try to attack the prison. Now in terms of the cells themselves, the prison has 256 cells, and each of these cells is designed to house 156 prisoners which is a huge number. If you've watched any prison movies at any point in your life, you'll be aware that in most prisons, you have two or three or maybe four prisoners to one cell. 156 prisoners is an insane amount of people. And in terms of the sleeping arrangements, the prisoners are given metal bunk beds with no mattress and no pillow. So you won't be able to complain about how soft your pillow is or how hard it is because you haven't got one. And these bunk beds are stacked four high and there are 156 of these metal beds in each cell. Now in terms of the facilities, each cell has two toilets, which means that there is one toilet per 78 prisoners in that cell. And there are also two concrete basins, 
where the prisoners have to wash their clothes and themselves. So these facilities are obviously really very brutal from a prisoner point of view. And as you can see, there is absolutely no provision for privacy whatsoever. So if you want to go to the toilet or have a wash, then you could have potentially 155 guys watching you doing that. Now, in terms of the ceiling of the cell, it's a diamond-shaped metal mesh, and the holes allow the guards to keep an eye on the prisoners. They're walking above the space that the prisoners are in, and the lattice is made of sharpened metal to prevent prisoners from hanging from it or trying to climb. There are no windows, no fans, and no air conditioning, despite the fact that El Salvador has warm temperatures and high humidity all year round. So these cells are going to be hot and humid and filled with 156 people. Now, in terms of the provision for exercise, there is no official posting and there are mixed messages in terms of whether or not the prisoners are given any exercise time at all. The official line is that prisoners will only leave their cells for online hearings, solitary confinement, or for work, and we'll talk about the work on offer for these prisoners later in the video. There is no outside recreational space and no family visits are allowed, which actually contravenes international guidelines on prisoner rights. However, as I mentioned at the start of the video, Naib Bekele's focus is on breaking the gang culture in El Salvador, and he said that the gang members do not deserve any constitutional rights. In terms of mealtime, Unlike prison movies where you may have seen people going to the canteen or the mess to have their food, and usually that's when some sort of riot breaks out in the movies, there is no canteen or communal eating area in this prison. Prisoners are given their food in their cells, and it's reported that they're fed rice, bran, hard-boiled eggs and pasta, and they have to eat all of this with their hands. No metal or plastic or wooden utensils are provided to prevent the prisoners from using these as weapons. When Nayib Bukele was elected as president of El Salvador in June 2019, the country had one of the highest homicide rates in the world as a result of the fact that gang culture was rife and there was a lot of murders between the gangs. And you can see from this chart that in 2015, El Salvador's homicide rate was 103 per 100,000 inhabitants, which was the highest in the world at that time. But you can also see that over the last eight years, the homicide rate has reduced dramatically. And in 2023, it was actually down to 2.4 per 100,000 inhabitants. So a reduction of almost 50 times compared to where the country was in 2015. And one of the reasons for this massive reduction in the homicide rate has been the crackdown on the gang culture instigated by Nayib Bukele. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, over the last two years, over 75,000 suspected gang members have been arrested and incarcerated in El Salvador. And that is genuinely breaking the gang culture. It's not just the fact that he's taking gang members off the street. He's also now preventing those gang members from being in contact with their gangs and continuing to run their operations from prison. And also he's sending a very strong message to the gang members who are still on the streets that when we catch you, you will be imprisoned and you won't be released. And this table shows the countries with the highest percentage of prisoners per population as of January 2024. And you can see that El Salvador is right at the top of this list. And the figure of 1,086 prisoners per 100,000 of population means that currently more than 1% of the total population of El Salvador is in prison. And that figure compares to 794 prisoners per 100,000 of population in Cuba, 637 in Rwanda, 576 in Turkmenistan, and 538 in American Samoa. So what this tells us is that Naib Bukele is laser focused on getting those gang members off the streets and into prison. And obviously in order to be able to do that, he needs to build more prisons. And the biggest prison in the world is rapidly filling up with gang members. Now in terms of the public response to what Naib Bukele is doing, this chart shows the outcome of a Gallup poll that was taken recently asking the people of various South American countries how happy they are with their leader. And as you can see from this, the people of El Salvador are extremely happy with what Naib Bukele is doing. 
he has a 92% popularity rating at the moment. So 92 out of 100 people believe that he's doing a great job and they're right behind him. And as you can see, that popularity rating puts him streets ahead of the next most popular leader in the Dominican Republic who has a popularity rating of 66%. Costa Rica came in number three at 55%. The leader of Guatemala had 54% popularity and the only other country with a rating above 50% was Honduras. And what this tells us is that the people of El Salvador are very happy that the gangs are being broken, that people are being taken off the street who are extorting money out of them and causing violence and robbery and theft and lots of other crime. They don't want that to carry on. They want these people put into prison. And the people of El Salvador are not hugely concerned about what happens once those guys go to prison. Now, in terms of the solitary confinement wing, this is where we're going now. And as you can see, this is a large concrete structure. So it's fairly grim. It's going to be relatively cold. And the idea here is to isolate prisoners. Now, there is no electricity in this cell. So it is pitch black when the door is closed. And we've got a concrete bunk and then a wash area. So basically another concrete basin that you'll either have to wash or go to the toilet in. And when that light is off, as you can see, it is virtually pitch black in that room. When the door is closed, you won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. So this is really hardcore solitary confinement. Nothing to do, no entertainment, no computer, no mobile phone, nothing. It's literally just sitting in a dark room for the whole time until somebody comes and unlocks the door. Now, in terms of interaction with the prisoners, there is a sliding section on the front of the metal door so that the prison guard can actually look in and see what's happening within the cell, albeit it's going to be pitch black in the cell. So it'll be really difficult to actually see anything and see if anything is actually going on in there. Now, in terms of interaction with the prisoner, there is a pull down flap so that meals can be fed through. And also when a prisoner needs to come out of this cell, they will put their hands through this flap so that they can be handcuffed before they are then taken away. And again, this is designed for security purposes to make sure that the prison guards are safe and to make it more difficult for the prisoners to do anything to attack the guards. Now, prisoners will be given the opportunity to work in the prisons and they've built purpose-built work areas where prisoners will be taken to and then be given specific jobs and tools and specific tasks to try to repay some of their debts. So this is the only form of entertainment that prisoners will have within the prison is to go to work and actually do something in terms of payback. Now, in terms of the guards in these prisons, the prisoners who are going to be located here are hardcore gang members. You saw from the beginning of the video that these guys have a lot of tattoos. They've been brought up in a gang culture. So there could be potential for a lot of violence and violent activity. So the guards have been given a lot of protective equipment. This is basically riot control. So all of the guards will have helmets. They will have guns. They will have protective equipment and they will be effectively going into a warfare situation. And all of the equipment in the mega prison is brand new. Everyone has been supplied with the latest state-of-the-art protective equipment. So you can see here that we've got a line of guards who are all in riot gear, so they're ready for action. This is how these guys will be dressed at all times in the prison. They will have helmets and guns and riot shields and anything that they need to protect themselves. And these guys will be fully trained and a lot of these operatives are likely to have army training previously. And you can see that they're all standing to attention here to salute the president. Now, in terms of the training that these people have been given, they have been set up to break up riots. That's essentially what these prison guards expect that they're going to be doing. So if you can imagine 100 gang members who've decided that they want to start rioting, that's going to be fairly intimidating. That's going to be quite difficult to break up. They shouldn't have any weapons, but you never know. But if you look at what the riot police have got, they've got machine guns, they've got full riot gear on, they've got helmets, and there are a lot of them. So the idea is that these squads will line up outside of the cells and try to break up any riot that's going on within that cell itself. But as these cells will be locked for most of the time, the riot should be contained to individual cells and therefore it won't be the whole prison that's rioting. And in addition to the prison guards that will be located on the ground, there will also be other prison guards who will be in elevated positions along the gangways along the top of the prison. They've also got guns, so they will be able to take action if needed. 
Now, one of the complaints about the prison service historically has been that the guards haven't really had any facilities whatsoever. So in this new mega prison, we've got dormitories where all of the guards will be sleeping. We've got individual washing facilities, so they've got private shower cubicles. We've got private lockers, so everybody can store all of their equipment and all of their personal items in there. But you can see that all of the prison guards will be sleeping in a mass area. So it's very similar to what you see in the army. And that's not very surprising because effectively what we've got is the army will be manning this prison. But in terms of the welfare of the prison guards, there are some entertainment facilities. So we've got some table tennis tables that have been put in. So you can have some downside and actually play some games. And the prison guards will have access to a full gym. So all of these machines are brand new. They'll be able to come in here and exercise. These machines are not available to the prisoners. So there will be no gym. There will be no exercise equipment for the prisoners themselves. They will all be kept in their cells. All of these new facilities are for the prison guards only, not for the prisoners. And the idea behind all of this is that the prison guards will be able to maintain a healthy lifestyle and therefore be happier in their work. Now, of course, one of the other features about a prison is that you need to make it secure. You need to make it difficult for people to either break out or to break in. You don't want the gangs being able to get into the prison and extract people or for people to get out. So the prison has been set up with 19 towers. So these are raised areas where it will be very easy to see what's going on, to see if there's any prisoners in unauthorised areas. And they will be manned at all times. And in addition to that, the prison also has electrified chain fences with 15,000 volts of electricity going through that chain fence at all times. So even if a prisoner does manage to escape from the central area and get out to one of these fences, if they try to climb that fence, they will be electrocuted by 15,000 volts. The walking areas all around the outside of the prison have all been laid with gravel to make sure that there's lots of noise so that if prisoners are trying to escape, if they do manage to get into these areas, people will be able to hear them and it will set off the sound detection system. Now, in addition to the electrified fences, the concrete walls all around the facility are reinforced. So therefore, they should be able to withstand any sort of bomb damage or bomb attack. And they're also 11 meters high. So that's around 35 feet high. So these things are going to be very difficult to scale. And then even if you did manage to scale the sheer concrete wall, it's got an electrified fence on top of that as well. So there are a lot of design features that have been built in to make it very difficult for any of these prisoners to be able to get out. So this mega prison has been designed to make it very difficult to escape from. Firstly, the prisoners are held within the cell, within the module. Secondly, the building itself that the cells are within are locked down and secure. And then once you get out of those areas, you've then got to scale the electrified fences. If you get past the electrified fences, you then have to go over the graveled area and you meet these concrete walls, which also have electrified fences on top of them. And as well as the 19 towers that have been built all around the complex, there is also extensive CCTV and surveillance equipment. So the idea is that the guards will notice if somebody is trying to break out of this prison and therefore be able to do something about it. Now, in addition to the actual security of the building itself, outside of the prison, it's designed that there are going to be army patrols patrolling the whole of the area. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this mega prison has been set up in a remote location in the middle of nowhere. So even in the unlikely event that prisoners do get out, the army can then target all of those escapees. And the plan is to have around 600 soldiers and around 250 members of the National Civil Police on rotation protecting the area all around this prison. And all of these individuals will be armed. So the patrols will be constantly monitoring what's going on outside the prison, firstly to stop people from trying to escape out of the prison, but also to make sure that nothing's happening with regards to the gangs organising some sort of breakout, trying to do something either where they're scaling the walls or damaging the walls or digging under the walls or something of that nature. So the patrols will be constantly running around trying to stop all of that activity. So hopefully you've enjoyed this slightly different video today. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. And thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end.